Hey everybody, welcome back to the second video of the SMA Journey 51 series. The other day I did my first video where I introduced myself to you and I told you a little bit about the treatment that I'm going to be going through for my spinal muscular atrophy. Those of us with SMA are really excited because the FDA just approved the first treatment for spinal muscular atrophy. So every day that I find more information, I'm going to be posting new videos to my YouTube channel. In today's segment, I found some more information that was not only helpful to me, but I thought it would be helpful to you or if you know somebody, a loved one or a family member that may be thinking about going through the Spinraza treatment. So what I want you to do first is to watch a quick four minute video that I took from the website CureSMA.org. In this video, they talked to doctors and clinicians and scientists who developed the Spinraza treatment. And they also give some great information on what they had to go through to get it through the FDA approval process. So watch this quick four minute video and I'll come back and I'll give you some more information. Spinraza is a drug that treats the underlying genetics of SMA. It increases SMN protein levels. And it came out of the fact that CureSMA funded grants to Dr. Ravindra Singh and Elliot Androphy at the University of Massachusetts. From there, Adrian Craner at Cold Spring Harbor Lab and Frank Bennett at uh, Ionis Pharmaceuticals went on to take this knowledge um, and do the preclinical development. So the effect of nusinersen is that uh, it, it um, allows the SMN2 gene, which is present in all SMA patients, to uh, produce normal or nearly normal levels of the SMN protein. <laughs> I mean, it's 20 years ago that we just found the gene for SMA, and at that time, that was the biggest news ever. It was 20 years ago, and here we are now. Well, I remember coming to meetings 20 years ago, and which were much smaller then, but we'd meet the, the, the people who were afflicted and affected by this, and they'd say, can you do something for us? So I started at Cure SMA 12 years ago, as I said, but I've actually started in the field in the year 2000, and in the year 2000, we had no drug companies working on SMA and no actual drug programs in development. I started to work on SMA maybe 15 years ago and from the beginning <clears throat> I met um, SMA patients and their families and, and they've always been a source of inspiration for us, a source of motivation and, and getting the work done. Well, there's a lot of hope. They never lost hope. And that hope inspired all of us at Biogen and Ionis to keep working really hard on Noosa Nursing. My husband and I have four children. My son, Samuel, who is our second son, was born with SMA type 2. It's really great for Sam to be able to see the researchers that are working behind the scenes for him to be able to get stronger, for him to do these things that he dreams about. And it, it's a great connection to have that he knows that there's someone else that he doesn't know that's working for him every single day. We realize that drug development is inherently difficult and risky and that there are over 6,000 orphan diseases of which SMA is one and very few of them have treatments. So to have an FDA approved drug is a huge momentous step for our community. When you do the research you always hope that it's going to have a beneficial impact uh, and but but it always seems like that's a distant possibility it's something you strive for and now it seems to actually be happening and that's um, it's, it's like a dream come true it's very rewarding some of the most incredible people in the world honestly are, are part of this SMA community so um, the fact that they do have this hope now is absolutely amazing um, you know, this is what we've dreamed for for so long and what we've hoped for. And so for it to be here is beyond exciting and still kind of unbelievable. There's so many people to thank. First, the families. They provide our inspiration. They were volunteers in our clinical trials. They provided support and advice throughout all these years. The scientists who helped us understand SMA, the genetics of SMA and the biology of SMA and think about therapeutic approaches the clinical investigators who enrolled patients in our trials, the, um, the teams in the two companies, Ionis and Biogen, who worked hard on the clinical trials, the clinical development plan, and making sure that we got the drug to regulators so that we could get it approved. 
and uh, QRSMA, the organization, for their support and their advice. And it's just, it's just a blessing that everyone has come together um, in the SMA community, researchers, friends, family, people we don't even know, help support and to get the, a cure or a treatment for, for SMA. It, it is astounding and it's very humbling for us as a family. Okay, so now that she's in the video, another part of the ESSA or the Cure SMA website, it's curesma.org. I found another video where they did a webinar, which is where they took uh, family members and patients and they all hooked up on the internet so that these people could talk to some of the doctors and researchers that were responsible for developing spinorosum. And they also gave some great information on the steps that are necessary to go through to get approved for the Spinraza treatment. Now, I'm not going to show you a 40 minute video, but I did provide the link in the description below this video, and you can go to it and edit, copy it, and paste it into your web browser to watch it. But I did take four slides from this presentation, and I want to share these slides with you now. On your screen, you're seeing the first slide that says, What is Spinraza? Now, I'm not going to read every slide verbatim, but I am going to read the key features out of each slide. Spinraza is the first and only FDA-approved treatment for SMA, a genetic disease in which a lack of survival motor neuron, or SMN protein, affects the part of the nervous system that controls motor function. In NDIR, a pivotal controlled clinical study, individuals with infantile onset SMA treated with Spinraza achieved and sustained clinically meaningful improvements in motor function compared with untreated individuals. If you go down to the fourth bullet point, it goes on to read, in open label, uncontrolled trials in individuals who had or were likely to develop type 1, 2, or 3 SMA, some individuals treated with Spinraza showed improvements, including the achievement of milestones such as the ability to sit independently, stand, or walk when they would otherwise be unable to do so maintaining milestones at ages when they would be expected to lose them, and surviving longer than expected considering the typical course of their disease. The second slide on your screen talks about Spinraza and how it works and how it's administered. In laboratory tests and animal studies, Spinraza was shown to increase full-length SMN protein by targeting the process through which it is produced by a gene called survival motor neuron 2, or the SMN2 gene. Spinraza is given through an established procedure called an intrithecal injection. This delivers medication through the lower back via a lumbar puncture and directly into the central nervous system. This procedure is performed under the direction of healthcare providers experienced in administering lumbar uh, punctures. Sedation may be used depending on the condition of the individual. The third slide on your screen talks about dosing. The recommended dosage of Spinraza is 12 milligrams, or five milliliters per administration. The first four doses are called loading doses. The first three doses, or loading doses, should be given in 14-day intervals. The fourth loading dose should be given 30 days after the third dose. A maintenance dose should be given once every four months after that. And the last slide on your screen talks about important safety information that those of us with SMA that are going to be going through this treatment may encounter. Increased risk of kidney damage, including potentially fatal acute inflammation of the kidney, has been observed after administration of similar medicines. Your healthcare provider should perform urine testing at baseline and before each dose of Spinraza to monitor for early signs of this risk. Now what this means is, is that before I begin the actual injections of, of Spinraza, they'll take a urine sample so that they have a baseline with all of my figures. Then after each administration of Spinraza, they'll take another urine sample to see if these numbers have changed. 
The most common side effects of spinraza include upper and lower respiratory tract infections, complete or partial collapse of a lung or lobe of a lung, constipation, headache, back pain, and post-lumbar puncture syndrome. So again, every day I'm finding out new information regarding this new treatment. And every day that I find new information, I'll share it with you because I want you to go along this journey with me. My friends are excited and I'm excited. And there's a lot to be excited about because those of us with SMA finally can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Hey guys, I'll post all of these uh, slides and all of the videos down in the description so you have links to them. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, send me an email, or send me a, a message down below each video, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. I look forward to producing more videos, and I hope you look forward to watching. I hope you guys have a great day. God bless you, and until next time, bye-bye.